Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to have a look into rules and coding conventions and why they are exist in software engineering projects at all. They usually cost time, resources to come up with in the first place and then they suddenly dictate us what to do. So in this episode we want to discuss if we need them or if they can go away. Coding conventions and rules. Every team has them. They take up as so much time to discuss them, to enforce them and make sure everyone else is aware of them. It costs time to read them, understand them and apply them. And if a new colleague joins a team, he needs to be able to digest them fast. There is a simple solution, we should get rid of them and everyone can do what he wants. I mean, tools like IDEs are smart and Copilot is even better, so why even bother? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back to the beginning into the gray area of software development. Coding looked more like this and this. So here coding conventions and rules are not established and every developer was happy to do what he wanted to do. One possible explanation is that teams worked years and years to create something meaningful. Also, the tools were not that improved. Most of them were the classical nerd or scientist who had the ability to finish their work in time and they know exactly what they're doing. Coding standards have been already established, but usually as a do it, less affair mentality. The first milestone of coding conventions I came across has been created, sorry for that, Edgar W. Jigstra in 1968. He was professor of mathematics at the University of Netherlands and his coding conventions are still applicable in most of our software today, such as use meaningful names for variables, functions and modules. Use consistent indentation and for the improvement of readability. Break up long blocks of code into smaller, more manageable junks. Use comments to explain the purpose of code and avoid using go-to statements which can make your code difficult to understand and debug. Another reference to written and expected rules for coding I found at NASA for their space program. They wanted to have rules that make their software as future-proof and energy-efficient as possible. There have been a lot of guidelines that they have implemented to make sure that the code would always run and be as resilient as possible. Also, they introduced peer reviews of their code as a must-have. And down in the video description, I park you a link um, where you can see them. To give you some examples, no recursion, no go-tos. Loops must have a fixed bound. No dynamic memory allocation after initialization. And if you are interested, as I said, down in the video description, you will find the link where you can read more about that. That this worked out, we can see even today. The Space Probe Voyager 1 runs now since 45 years and is still on its way. And the software is still working, even though they shut down services at the moment. But this is a different topic. And if you do not know what go-tos are, Go-tos are a programmatic way to add labels to your code, execute the code and then jump back. It was like jumping back and forth into your code base and modern languages like Dart do not really support that anymore. But if you work with C or C++, you will come across from time to time to them. It is also interesting to note that it seems that the higher a programming language is in the stack, the more rules apply to it. Programmers on an embedded device software tend to have fewer rules and guidelines than for example for a web application. But today we do not necessarily want applications to outlast humanity or shoot them into our the space. But still we came across of dozens of rules, linters and helpers. One aspect could be that the amount of possibilities how to implement specific things have been increased. Teams introduce more rules to make sure that a team or organization does it in a specific manner to avoid all the understanding problems. Another big point is that we learned that maintenance is an expensive part of software development. 40 to 80% of the lifetime cost of a piece of software goes into maintenance, according to statistic. And rules and conventions can help us reduce that amount or at least keep it in manageable boundaries. Another point is we as software engineers tend to switch our jobs more frequently nowadays. In old times, someone worked his whole life onto a piece of software that he delivered. 
Nowadays, a software engineer has a working span of around two years before he switches his job. That means the original author of a source code will usually not see its final result. Resul uh, rules and conventions are here like a legacy that someone passes to the next generation of developers. My magic light told me that you should like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Last but not least, code convention and rules help us with readability. The improved readability is useful for peer reviews and to digest code part easier and better, to enable us working further on existing code. Okay, and now that we know exactly why we need coding conventions and why they are here, let us make a short shift and see how we can enforce them into our project. You probably remember the videos where we talked about static code analysis. There we talked about how to add and remove different rules to your code that will be shown in your IDE. Even if the code is valid, we see errors in your IDE to inform us that there is something wrong. If you want to get a deep dive or refresh on that topic, check out the link up here in the info box where you can see the video. If you have them set up, you are already in a great shape. Also, if you have watched my video about Sonacube, you know about things like how to sell things to business and maybe how to restrict your rules and more like that. But today, I want to introduce you into another tool that not only allows you to add more rules and enforce them, but it also gives you the tool set that improves your life as a developer. The tool I am talking about is DCM. DCM is a toolkit that is based on five pillars. Rules, assist, metrics, commands, and configuration. It consists out of powerful CLI and provides plugins for IntelliJ and VS Code to make it as accessible as possible. Now that we know about the pillars of DCM and what it actually tries to solve all for problems, let's have a quick look on how to get started. We need three things to get started. The first thing is the documentation of DCM. In our case, this is uh, on dcm.dev. Here you find a getting started guide and all the rules, metrics, format, code line interfaces, and everything we need to get started with the tooling. We follow this getting started part. The second part is you need a terminal, um, which I have here. And the last part is, of course, a project where you want to get this stuff inside. In our case, we are using the WebRTC tutorial that I created because I think it is fairly complex. And if you have a really, really large project, I have some good news for you. But to that, we come later. So let's get started. First, what we will need to do is we go to the installation part. Here, for all three systems, we have an installation path. And as you can see, for Windows, for example, it uses Chocolatey. For Linux, it uses apt-get. And for macOS, we have Homebrew. The cool thing about that is that we have already, the creator of DCM has made his sem himself some thoughts, how he distributes it. And as you can see already, it is very professional because it uses package managers for all the different OS systems that we have. All right, but now let's jump into our terminal. And inside of here, we want to install DCM. So brew install DCM. And after some seconds, it downloads the formula, it gets everything it needs. And after that, it is installed. So if we execute DCM, we should get this nice little interface with all the different things we can execute inside of here. So now we want to execute DCM activate. And as you can see already, here is my license key with everything. So you will have to execute this information. I will blur probably the license key or deactivate it. So don't worry uh, that you can see that now. If you execute the whole thing, you can see it's getting activated and that's that. How do you get a license key? If you check the uh, DCM website, there is the pricing model and you can just get a, a license for you. And depending on your license, you get uh, yeah, the possibility to use the tool. Down in the video description, you get a link where you get 20% off or 50% off and make sure this is an affiliate link. So it could be that I earn a little bit of that money. So thank you if you're using that link, you are supporting directly Flutter Explained. All right, <clears throat> but back to our activation. So we have activated our license and now we have the possibility to use it in our existing project. And for that, I told already that we have VS Code open. And what we will need is in, if you go to extensions and search for DCM, you will directly find this nice little extension. I have it already installed, but it will give us more option to directly see things inside of our code. Good. And if you are that far, 
What we can do next is we go to our terminal once more and execute DCM and we would like to initialize the whole thing with the preview.lib. So what does that mean? Init tells us we want to create a baseline to our project. That creates a JSON file inside of our project that contains all the rules that we have violated in our project. Why is that the case? It should not directly throw these errors in our face because if we have a huge project, it could explode with thousands and thousands of errors that we cannot solve directly. DCM creator had made some thoughts about that and thought, okay, let's create a baseline in a JSON format. And whenever one of these files have changed, then the rules getting activated for this file. And this allows you to gradually switch over to the more strict rules in DCM. In my opinion, a very cool approach. The preview command in this case, so if you check out this one, will give you the option to first see all rules applied from DCM. So if I execute that now, it will show us all the different rules and which we have violated are on top in that case. So you can see here, for example, avoid async call in sync function. There is a warning for that. And if you click on the link behind, so let's do that, we get directly some explanation, what is going on, how to activate this rule. And yeah, we can directly start with that. The preview command um, so is only the first step. So let's say if I close that off again, and let's say we go now to DCM and we say init, and instead of preview, we use the, um, what is the other command? Let me quickly check again, the baseline. Baseline.lib. And if I can execute that, it just takes dot four seconds. And if I go into our project in VS Code, where is it? Sorry, up here, we get this baseline JSON. And as you can see, it is empty. Don't worry about that. The reason is because we have not defined in our code at the moment which rules should apply. So let's change that. All right, but how can we apply now this rule? Let's say we would like to have this avoid as in call in sync function as a rule in our project. So we open it. And here we get the name of the rule, but that doesn't necessarily help us. So here is the part of configure rules. And if I go here, we can see in our analyzes option.yaml, we add different rules into like this. First of all, dart, dart code metrics, which is the short long form for our DCM tool, rules, and then the rule that is applied. So we will copy that over, go to our project again, sorry, wrong direction. Here, analyzes option and just pass it afterwards. So we have the dark code matrix rules, and now remove this and replace it by the rule we would like to have. So in our case, avoid as in call in function sync. So applied, all right. So, and now if we do the same thing as before and it reanalyzes all project files. So as I said, this is now the tool that from DCM inside, but let's say we would now apply again the baseline. <clears throat> Let's see how our project looks now. As you can see now, we have here now our hashed files, like for example, lick signaling dart, where now we have the function with all the different hash codes of the errors. I guess this is the hash code of the line of code, actually. And if we now jump into this lip signaling dart, so here, and we can see there are now these errors. And if I change these and I would make uh, asking the initializer again, it will directly throw us these errors. So at the moment, this is just locally on the, uh, on the, um, on the IDE. But if I execute, for example, DCM analyze, it will not throw me an error because it is inside of this baseline JSON. And with that, we are quite safe that we don't get these errors. You would like to have an uh, example or want to see it? Let's do that. All right, so let's say we would like to fix the signaling dart, okay? So today we've changed this file and we would like to fix all the problems here. So we remove this part here with all the hash codes. And if we go here, we can now hopefully, ah, we have to restart once the IDE for that. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code, now we would see, should see all the important errors that we should want to see. So now we can make this async, for example, and we remove it. But because we don't want to do it all manually, we can ask DCM to do that for us. So there is the fix all auto fixable problems. And if I execute that, <clears throat> let's see if we can fix it. And unfortunately, it seems that this error is not auto fixable. 
but there are a lot of different possibilities that are automatically fixable. So with that, we can solve a lot of problems there. Uh, so yeah, but with that, we would have to add everywhere this async part just to make sure that we can see that these parts are asynchronous. And that's actually it already. This preview part can also be set by different severity levels. What does that mean? If we go here again, so you can see if you don't want to only see minor problems, you can also add the severity part where you can say how severe is the problem to make sure that the set of rules you apply is most specific to the part. All right, before we now jump into the uh, last check and finish our uh, video off, I would like to give you two more things I really enjoyed in uh, DCM so far. Number one, it checks for unused code, which I really like. Uh, also for unused files, you can deliver that. It dependencies unused L10n, so that means translations are checked, and the assists part. And one part is the wrap width. You probably know about uh, the possibility to wrap every widget with all, all kinds of other widgets. Let me quickly check if I find that in main.dart, I guess. So here we have a widget. And if I do it, it dot, uh, command dot, we get all of these different widgets parts. And we have to wrap with widget if we want to use a custom widget. Well, the assist part from DCM allows you now to specify as specific widget that you have created yourself with the child's and so on and so forth to wrap it directly inside of the code here. That means you don't have to write anything. You can directly select it like here wrap with center and it works out of the box. And that's pretty cool in my opinion. So very interesting to see and use. The other part that is also very interesting is if you have a lot of classes in a file and you would like to very quickly extract that into an own file, DCM gives you there an option, especially useful for classes, for stateless widgets, stateful widgets, etc. Very cool thing to use, very easy. There's also a formatter and all the other parts like metrics, uh, which I really like to sell uh, testing as always. And especially these uh, different metrics really gives a deep dive into all the different parts that are there and gives you nice little numbers that you crunch down or put in PowerPoint presentations to share with your audience and with your stakeholders. All right, if this sounds very cool for you and you would like to test it or play around with it, down in the video description, you find a link with 15% off and you, um, yeah, and you also directly support this channel with uh, buying it over that link. Don't forget, it is a named part. So if you buy it, you will have to use the code FLUTTEREXP to make sure that you get your uh, discount. All right, thank you so much for watching. <clears throat> now back to the main video. And now I would love to hear more from you. What is your most dread or beloved coding convention? Have you ever had to participate in a religious war over coding conventions? And how did, it, uh, did you and your team overcome them? Let me know in the comments below. And now it is time to learn more about records and patterns in Dart. So please check out the video here and uh, we will see us there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.